Hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Creepypastas. Yes, Creepypastas, a time where we take a break from the gaming side and enter the non-gaming side of our spooky internet campfire stories. This time we take a look at March Creepypasta of the Month, which is The Home Run Killer, a story about an individual who tapes his gory home runs and sends them to police officers, of all people. What can go wrong? What can go right in such a situation? Find out as we read The Home Run Killer. Have you ever thought of a person that you knew for sure couldn't be human? That could never die even if you tried everything in your might to stop him? I'm not talking about Jeff or Jane the Killer, no. I'm talking about someone equally or possibly more terrifying than them. Tula Beloff, aka The Home Run Killer. I guess I should start the story by saying that I am a detective who is investigating the horrific murders committed by Tula Beloff, or more urbanly known as The Home Run Killer, who is still at large to this very day. Tula reportedly quote-unquote home run 22 victims. I'm here to tell you what I came up with the little known history of the home run killer. He's described as a shady man, usually wearing a hoodie or a sweater, with a red bandana covering his mouth. His face is described with the contents of somewhat long black hair and red eye contacts. Tulo Iskabelov was born in a small Romanian community on January 2nd, 1981. At the age of three, Tulo's father, Sergei, beat his mother, Michaela, to death with a baseball bat, and was sentenced to hanging. Tulo was then sent to a foster home before being sent to an orphanage four years later. Sadly, no one was ever interested in adopting poor Tulo, even in high school. Tulo would always walk his way back to the orphanage he called home. Now, you could be feeling sympathy for Tulo Beloff before I tell you he was 21 times worse than his father, and diabolical enough to send the videos of his murders to the station. I guess this is a perfect time to explain the killings and how they went down. So about a week ago, we got an unknown phone mysteriously placed in front of a local police station, labeled for me specifically. We investigated the contents on the device and we found only 22 videos. There were no other changes to the phone, just 22 strange videos. The chief of police was not sure if I should investigate what was recorded, but I don't mind reviewing the videos. I was just very confused of why it was sent to me specifically. So I entered my office to review the first video. If you don't know, a detective's job for reviewing mysterious tapes is to always be prepared. But trust me, no one's ever prepared for what was on that phone. I got myself ready to record what was videotaped, hooked up the HDMI from the phone to a monitor, had a paper sketch pad, ready to describe what was on it, and I was ready to watch the first video. I looked at the title of the first video. I find it somewhat questionable, as the video was simply named VD.1201, and was about 15 minutes and 41 seconds long. But I sat back and hit the play button. The first thing I encountered or strange thing that I noticed, was that the video was pitch black for about 15 seconds. I actually thought the video wasn't even playing, but I saw that the play button was not in its pause state. The first scene aside, I was immediately jolted from a loud noise being heard in the background of the video. The camera panned up to show a man lying on the ground, all tied up and beaten. He lay there, muffling and trying to scream as loudly as he could. Then a man who I assumed was the person behind the camera started to speak in a very strange sounding accent. Yeah, you better be afraid, because I'm up at plate. Afterwards, I heard the sound of a metallic object being dragged across the floor. Tulo sat the phone down on a nearby object and pointed it towards the victim. He was dragging the metal baseball bat on the floor beside him and walked over to the petrified victim. He was trying to do whatever he could to get out of there. Tulo had enough of the victim's futile begging and slowly said, You're out. Tulo took a fierce, powerful swing in the victim's face. He made a huge dent in his face in that swing and then proceeded to brutally bash the poor man's skull in for who knows how long. I couldn't watch. After what seemed like 10 minutes, I just looked in horror, about to gag, and to be honest, I couldn't stop myself from vomiting in pure disgust. But then he finally stopped. I looked up to see the silence of the room and saw what was on, at least what was left of the man. His face was unrecognizable, covered in red guts and bone. His body lay limp upon the ground and a, an ocean of blood surrounding him. I looked back down, preparing for another gag, but nothing had come out. I attempted to proceed and process the horrible crime scene. I just witnessed, until the monster looked back at the camera and talked once more. I can see your face right now, a face of pure fear, a prime example of the faces of my upcoming victims, even though you can't really see his face right now. I know he was scared, just like how you're now. He then grinned, not just at the camera, but at me. He wanted someone to watch these gruesome videos to see how batshit crazy he was, and to see how much of a name he made for the home run killer. I'll see you all soon, Tulo Beloff signing off. He whipped the bat at the man one final time and yelled, home run. When the bat hit his corpse, finally, the video had ended. I was speechless. 
I looked down on my sketch pad, my hand was shaking but ready to write what I had witnessed. But how could I explain the video alone to the chief? I then also realized I had to watch 21 more videos, possibly just like this. My mind was scattered and I didn't know what to do, so I told him that we have one confirmed murder and that I'd keep reporting throughout the week, but I really didn't like the thought of what would possibly happen next. I just wanted the day to be over so I could go home and get as much sleep as I possibly could. I woke up frenetically with a nightmare of the home run killer, of course. It went as if I was a poor man who had his face bashed in with that baseball bat. I was lying on the hard tile floor in a room I was not familiar with. I had tried to look around and see where I was, but everything was nearly pitch black, the only light source being a small light hanging from the ceiling. Suddenly I heard footsteps approaching me. I rolled over on my back and saw the maniac, Tulo, approaching me with a metal baseball bat, grinning maniacally at me. I tried desperately to get away, but Tulo had made sure that I couldn't stand. My legs were bound together in duct tape along with my arms. He hovered over me with a bat in his hands. He couldn't do anything except stare endlessly into my eyes. I didn't think he was going to do anything, but then it hit me. No, it literally hit me. Tulo struck me in the chest with a bat as hard as he could. He left me lying there, gasping for air. It felt as if he had punctured a hole in my lung. Then he took another swing. This one hit me right in the knee. I cried out in agony, but I could no longer feel my leg nor move it. He was just circling around me like a vulture. But at the same time, he was staring directly into my eyes. He circled me for a good five minutes before he just stopped, still looking at me with his menacing red eyes. He was starting to look very unpredictable. One minute he would go for the hit, and the next he would just stand around and watch. Then without warning, he yelled, home run, and the bat swung in my head. I woke just before it hit me. It didn't really, I didn't really feel like going into work today, actually, and watching any more of those videos. I just called in sick and took a day of relaxation, honestly. I went into work the day after, but I didn't feel like my normal self today, I mean I just felt different. I walked into the building and went over to my boss's office so I could show him the video. I knocked on his door and walked on in. My boss asked how the video was and I looked up at him with a worried face and handed him the phone, and then waited outside his office. I tried to warn him, I tried so hard to warn him, and after a bit of waiting, he barged the door open. I noticed that his hand was violently shaking the door handle, so I asked, Sir, are you, uh... Just as I was about to finish asking my question, the chief vomited on the floor. I backed up in worry, and after catching that incident, the chief told me to go home and stop the investigation. At first, I thought he was right. I told him I couldn't watch anymore, but I lied. I lied and I took that phone when they didn't notice. This would unfortunately lead to my downfall. So after I got back home, I got my sketch pad once more and thought I was ready to watch the second video, so I gulped and hit the play button. This time the video got straightened in the action, as there was Tulo holding his bat in his bloody hands and a girl beside him. I had a good idea what was about to happen next, and I didn't like one bit of it. Tulo then talked to the unfortunate woman with his awful dialogue. Hello there, girl. I'm sorry to say. I've been very bored for a long time. All I can say for you right now is that you talked to the wrong person at the wrong time. Goodbye. He then swung his bat towards her and missed. He dented a big hole next to the woman and on purposely said, Strike one. He swung at her once more, this time making a hole in the other side of her head. This hole went even further into the cement wall. He must be really strong, I thought. He then proceeded to slowly say, Strike two. I knew what was going to happen next and I looked away. I heard one final muffled scream right before I heard a splat coming from the phone. Strike three. You're out. The silence commenced and the video ended. I now noticed that he wouldn't hesitate to kill women either. I swear for the whole week I thought he broke me. One disgusting murder scene after another and one god awful baseball one liner after another too. I even saw he misled a child to his unfortunate demise. A child had no idea who Tulo really was. I remember what Tulo said. Here, I'm gonna throw the ball and you're going to hit it to me, okay? The child agreed to Tulo's game. Tulo threw the ball at the boy who hit it back lightly. The ball rolled back to Tulo. Tulo then walked over to the child and explained, No, 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 no. If you're going to hit the ball, you got to hit it as hard as you can. The child nodded willingly. What he did next was inhumane. He grinned and said, Like this. Tulo whacked the poor child in the face as hard as he could. He killed him instantly. The remnants of his skull lay beside his face in a gory, hellish scene. I think... That video broke the last of my sanity because I now noticed that I didn't even react that much to the video. I was just not reacting it much because I knew the outcome of every video, murder and death. But at least I found out he could be damaged. On the 17th video, there was a man who secretly had a shard in his back pant pocket. 
During a speech Tulo had, he cut his bindings and furiously attacked Tulo. The man cut Tulo twice before he knocked over the camera. After about 30 seconds of screaming in pain, silence was heard in the background and out of nowhere. No one picked up the phone, and to my disappointment, it was Tulo. His face was very cut up and was breathing very heavily in pain after the struggle between the man. It was also finally on the last video, Finale 1, Finale 1223, actually. I was so relieved that all of this would be over today, but I was also afraid. This would be likely the worst video, and the name is very cliched. The video starts similar to the first video, except it completely shows Tulo's face after the first 15 seconds, with medium pure black hair, and those demonic red eye contacts. This video had the worst, worst quality. Worst. I mean, bad. It looked throughout background, and to see if there was anyone else, but there wasn't. I mean, I couldn't see anyone. There was no one else, just him staring at the camera. And then he says, Anthony, I'm very glad you have been watching my videos. I've been watching your fear, quite hysterical I must say. Looking at you seems to put a giant smile on my face. How did he know my name? He must have been kidding, he couldn't have known me or maybe now I just didn't want to admit it. I know you. I've been in the corner of your eyes for the whole week, hell. <laughs> I could even be watching you right now. I looked back anxiously in case he was. I couldn't see anyone. I was now getting increasingly scared. You may be thinking. I am looking at the murderer who ruined so much family's lives, but no. Tulo brushed his front bangs out of the way, revealing a giant stitched up bloody scar on the side of his forehead. This is the source of my insanity, the madness that corrupted me long ago. The doctors never knew I lost my psyche, deep down the person I was before it died and was taken over by darkness. I don't know what he was saying, I mean, come on. You know Anthony, you're the only one that actually knows who I really am, and because I told you my history of murders. I'm gonna have to kill you. I had a shocked and worried expression on my face. You're right, Anthony. Have a nice safe trip to the police station. As Tulo maniacally laughed at the video ended, I grabbed a kitchen knife and my gun and slowly made my way to the police station. Strangely, I did not see anyone on the way. It was a damp and very foggy day and I couldn't see anyone else in sight and to be honest, I thought I saw him a couple times grinning at me. But I made it safe and sound, and also luckily the station was still open. I made my way down the hallway and into my office. Some of my friends gave me a strange look like I was crazy. I gave my boss the rest of the video so he could review them and told him more about what I'd witnessed. He told me I could take as long as I could to come back to work. I was so relieved. That what Tulo said couldn't have been true. I was still very confused of how he knew some of my personal info. But I was more busy trying to get out of town for a little while, and before I left my boss told me to pick to just lock up the police station. I was putting away my work and getting ready to go. Then, I heard a very faint noise from behind me. Hello, detective. Need help with anything? I slowly looked back, and it was one of the foreign colleagues who usually help out for employment. No, thanks for asking, I said. I then continued locking up the office. But then he asked this. I just got started watching baseball, and I don't know what goes on in it. Can you tell me a few things? Now I was a bit confused, so I just responded with, Well, there's singles, doubles, triples, and it. I paused in terror. I looked back and saw a better description of the colleague. He had black hair, red eyes, and was holding the baseball bat. Tula fucking bell off. I was closer to the door, so I slowly backed up, wondering what would happen next. He then enthusiastically said, I'm sorry. I do not think I let you finish. A what? I quickly pulled out my gun and fired two shots. The first bullet deflected off his bat, and the second shot got him by on his right arm. I ran out of the office as fast as I could and saw a baseball bat fly through the wall. I could hear an iconic faint home run from Tulo. I ran down the hallway with a knife in my hand. He threw the baseball bat down the hallway and just missed me again. I shot him in the hip after he missed me. I attempted to shoot him once more, but I pulled the trigger too hard and broke the gun. I kept running, thinking of how stupid I was for my gun to break. But then I had an idea. The moment Tulo swung around the corner of the hallway, I would stab him with my knife and end this once for all. I waited around the corner. All I could hear was a bat dragging across the tile floor, slowly getting louder and louder. The noise eventually stopped. I charged the man with all of my might, ready to stab the demon. I got him directly at the side of his chest. He somehow kept his composure, and after a bit of standing, he laughed. And he was just laughing. His laugh grew louder and crazier by the moment. At the beginning, I talked about trying to stop someone who can't die, and that's what he truly is. Tulo can't be a human. And then he said, You really thought a knife could kill me? Well, to be honest, you could have. You really did damage me and <laughs> the most out of my victims, I mean. But, I mean, you are also good at stabbing me. 
and shooting me in non-vital areas, I might add. Tula slowly pulled a knife out of his chest and acted as if it was just a small cut, and it was impossible. That should have killed him for good. How? How could someone be that resilient? How did I miss a vital area? How is he not dead? I then realized in terror of what was going to happen next. Tula took one of his deadly swings directly from my head. I attempted to block it with my arm, and it worked, but it came at a price. I stumbled on the ground and looked at my arm. I glanced in terror to see that my arm was very dislocated and bleeding everywhere. I screamed in torture as Tula took another hard swing at my leg. This time I didn't even scream, my voice cracked and I made a loud whimpering noise from my mouth, like an injured dog. I then yelled at him. You won't get away with this. The 21 people you killed are going to be avenged. Tula then laughed hysterically. Do you really think I videotaped all my murders? Trust me. I've killed a lot more than you can ever imagine, Anthony. I only tape my most memorable and pleasant murders. I was getting increasingly scared. I wanted to deny every word he spat out of his mouth. I couldn't let him get to my head, not anymore. I attempted to get back up to fight Tulo, even in my crippled state, but I could not move. I didn't even feel any part of my body. I was stuck and clearly ready to die. Tulo bent down and pulled my paper sketch pad out of my pocket and inside the coat he was wearing. He pulled out a bottle of whiskey and a rag. I knew what he was going to do. He was about to tie up those loose ends I started. All I could do was stare, stare at Tulo and wait for him to give me my untimely death. He rolled up my sketch pad and shoved it into a bottle. He put the rag on top afterwards and lit it. Tula then looked at me and gave me his devilish grin. He said his epilogue. Anthony, always remember, there's no possible escape for me, and of course, this is final home run. He threw that newly made Molotov in my head. I burst into flames in a blink of an eye, slowly losing my skin and my life. As I lay there, dying in a fiery blazing inferno, I hear Tula say in his final sentence before exiting the police station, People of this terrible excuse of a world, your reaper, has arrived in a physical entity to bring you to hell. So run, hide, pray for your life, I don't care, because I'm at plate, and I'm never leaving. Well, that was quite something. We may have a character that stands for the likes of Jeff the Killer, but it's not like that's a big thing to do. Honestly, this one's leagues better than that, but due to how it's written and uh, the buildup it has, it's not overtly wrong and actually has a concept that sends some chills down spines. The fact that it's something inhuman can really exist. And you know what? Again, like I always say, with so much that goes on in the world, people like this do exist, and that's what makes it ultra eerie, because it happens, unfortunately, more than we think. But when you equate the individual to the Grim Reaper, like in this story, it kind of becomes laughable, almost like a horror movie trying to be scary too damn hard. But the concept of an individual recording his or her kills and sending them exclusively isn't unique, and we've seen it countless times in other media and lore. But here, because of the build-up and detailing of the character, with albeit a very cliched and relatively unexplained backstory, is still pretty well done. The actions and dialogue towards the end were something taken out of an action movie going for far too much edge. So much, in fact, that during the recording of this episode, I started to sharpen some blades. But you have to really see that this encounter in the end kind of detracts out of the whole experience, which, you know, to be fair, it does have this fight scene, which is a rare sight in creepy bosses, but it ended up to be the most laughable twist with the Grim Reaper at the end and the fact that you really couldn't kill the person no matter how many times you stabbed and shot the individual. But something quite unforgivable had occurred, and that is the protagonist dying. Look, we've seen it before, a lot in shit passes, and honestly, it's kind of a slap in the face, because for starters, how the hell is somebody writing this when they're dead? It's not even like they wrote some pages and somebody came across, you know, after they came back, whatever. It's not... No, it's right from the mind of the individual talking to you after the friggin' death. Come on, man. Come on. But taking those little aspects of the way, it had a very decent premise. It had a character that you were interested in. It had a whole story that you were interested in. And it stuck to what it had relatively well. And it had good buildup, although, you know, there are things going against it. If only the character wasn't the Grim Reaper and we had a living protagonist, I'd say we'd have a pretty good tale. But for now, it's sort of a hit and miss for me. It has good and it has bad. So tell me in the comments below what you'd rate and what would you change to make it better, and if this deserves Creepypasta of the Month. This has been another episode of Creepypastas, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.